Let's start. So let me explain the plan for today and tomorrow. Plan for. Uh, first plan is, well, first thing, we I'm going to move to the discussion of uh, categorical quantum local geometrical angles. Then talk about how to deduce various equivalences of categories that I mentioned and also th those that Roma mentioned, although not the ones with mod p coefficients, but only the ones with uh, coefficients characteristic zero, how to use various equivalences of categories. One and three, which will mostly be discussed tomorrow, is to discuss uh, the so called Kapustin Witten family of topological quantum field theories, and I'll spend some time tomorrow reminding you just uh, what, what these uh, things are. Maybe I, let me emphasize here that it will be what's called extended topological quantum field theories. And again, I'll talk about this tomorrow and uh, relate this again to number one. Okay, now I'm going to start with something pretty general and much less elementary than it's actually going to be needed. So let me just one say, so okay, so we, we start with number one. So like I said, so even before we discuss the word quantum, I want to say the following, that so sort of usual cl classical Langlands uh, was about the following, at least one of the main players, uh, so in sort of, let me write it in usual Langlands correspondence. Uh, the, the main, it is one of the main players, uh, main player, or one of the main players was representations of G of K, where K was local non archimedean field, where K is, for example, field of Laurent power series over FQ, or find the extension of QP. Now, as I have already emphasized many, many times, when you go to what's called geometrical angles, you usually, uh, what one thing is, one thing you do, you replace this field by the field of Laurent power series with complex coefficient, and the other thing you always have to do is, you have to go sort of one categorical level up. So a representation is an action of a group on a vector space. Now, uh, uh, so to formulate things properly, we need to discuss, uh, so now we're going to replace, uh, so we're going to change K to C of T, and uh, we need to discuss the relevant notion of, uh, discuss, let me say like this, actions of G of K, or in fact will be, uh, uh, also there will be a central, central extension uh, on categories. And there are, Various, no, very, 
various very different notions of um, actions of group or groups or actually algebraic groups and categories. And this is what I want to talk about. So let me begin here. So, so let's forget about the story of, of loop groups. That, that, that these are complicated objects. Let's first uh, talk about fine dimensional algebraic groups. Or actually, as a warm up, let's first discuss actions of just absolute groups and categories. So this is. So this is I, I did in my work. Oh, you did it? OK. Well, so we're not going to discuss it. So, but let me. <laughs> no, no, I mean, uh, let me just, OK, I'll just write it that. Uh, uh, so, so if G is just an abstract group, and C at this point is any category, but uh, uh, in a moment I'll have to uh, assume something about this category. So, I'll actually assume that it's sufficiently nice abelian category, although in t the true picture will need to drive everything, but, uh, but for now, I'll just see it be any category. Then there's a notion of G acting. On uh, uh, C. And uh, well, and you can say that this is a uh, Mm, uh, well, one way to think about this is just the most naive way to think about this is to say that for any G in G, we need some functor FG from C to C. Uh, and um, essentially, these functors compose the same way as elements of the uh, groups multiplier. But of course, when you're working with categories, this, is, uh, uh, this has to be formulated properly. But uh, since Pavel says that he discussed it in his lectures, then I'm sure that he did discuss it properly. So, so let me just write, uh, write some plus some compatibility. Just we even computed all actions of the group in the negative vector. Very well. So now I want to say the following. Suppose that our group, well, th this is OK if the group is just an abstract group. Then there's nothing else you can do. Now. Uh, suppose that your group it has some extra structure. I mean, for example, it could be Lie group, or for us, it's what, what's more relevant is, is, the, um, uh, is to have an algebraic group. If you have an algebraic group, then it's clear that somehow when I define this notion, you're completely ignoring this additional structure that the, that the, group, that the group has. So somehow uh, you. Uh, want some modification of this notion, which remembers, uh, which uses, uh, let me say it like this, uh, the structure of an algebraic group. So let now G be an algebraic group. Over some field, let's say complex numbers. And let me assume something about C. So like I said, in, in the true picture, we need to work with some DG categories and so on. But for now, let's assume that C is just, let's say that C is an abelian category. Uh, and I want to assume, just to be careful, that uh, which has all co-limits, which means that it has all filtered inductive limits. For example, the category of vector spaces, but not fine dimensional vector spaces, but just all vector spaces. Uh, so I want to define, uh, so now uh, I want to define some kind of enhancement of this notion. There actually will be two enhancements. So one will be uh, more relevant uh, uh, for, uh, 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 for this story, but nonetheless, I want to discuss both. So there will be two notions of action of G on C. There will be a notion of weak action and the notion of strong action. Now, this notation is slightly misleading because even the weak action is much stronger than 
than just an action of G. So, uh, so, 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 there is no, so any of these will include ju just an, action, an action of the abstract group G on the category C, but the weak action is much stronger than just that. So, <laughs> and, and, and the strong action is even stronger than that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Yeah, this is a, this is just an action, which is the same as very weak action. Uh, but it's also extremely weak, which is uh, when you just uh, get pointers. No, no, I said compatibility. I didn't. I didn't say. I mean, I didn't say what compatibilities mean. But somehow, I was kind of. I mean, since you said it discussed it, then I think that explains. But you can make it weaker. You can just require. You can, you can, but somehow, you're right. But that's not what we can do. Okay. <laughs> So now let me discuss let me uh, discuss the notion of weak action. Let me before I give a definition, let me give an example. And uh, example will be the following. Let X be any algebraic right, or let's say any scheme with an action of G. Then let's take C to be the category of quasi-coherent sheaves on X. Then, well, it is more or less obvious that G acts on this category, but in fact that will be an example of what I'm going to call a weak action. Then G acts. Well, again, I'm going to define this notion, but and uh, so the definition should be designed in such a way that this thing will be an example. Uh, now let me give a slightly informal definition, and then we'll formalize it completely. So informal definition is the following. Maybe let me write it here. Suppose that you have an object, let me call it maybe M, uh, an object of C. Then if you have these functors, then uh, you can construct a family of objects. So let, let's say MG is FG of C. So again, a weak action is just an action plus additional structure. Now, what is the additional structure? The additional structure is the following. So, so if you just have an action just of the abstract group, you can, uh, you, can you can do something like this. You can actually construct a uh, starting from any object and construct a, uh, a new family of objects. Uh, well, again, a sorry, a family of objects which, are which is parameterized by elements of your group. Uh, FG of M, yes. Sir. You can extract a family of objects parameters by elements of the group. Now, if your group has some structure, for example, an algebraic group structure, then you would like this family to have the same structure. So what we would like to say is that a weak action is a change. Well, is that a weak action it will be uh, 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 the following structure. It will be these functors together with the following data that uh, for every, uh, for every uh, object, this family should be an algebraic family. So it should, it should somehow depend on G in an algebraic way. So I'm going to say what it means precisely in a moment, but somehow the idea is that this family, and you know, this is not a property, this is a structure. This family should be An algebraic family with respect to G. So, for example, if, it, if you look at the example when uh, this category is the category of vector spaces, then it's clear what it means. Then somehow here we have a vector space for every G, uh, and want this to be an algebraic family. So, uh, what is an algebraic family? An algebraic family parameterized by points of some variety. This is a quasi-coherent sheaf. So one, and you know, and this is a structure. So somehow we say that somehow one quasi-coherent sheaf whose fibers are given by by these elements by this vector spaces. Now, the 
careful and correct way to formulate this is the following. So the, def the actual definition goes as follows. And uh, you can try to convince yourself that it re really implements this informal idea. Uh, definition is the following. So consider uh, the category of quasi-coherent sheaves on G. So this category has a monoidal structure. which has to do with multiplication on G. With, uh, so it's a monoidal structure given by convolution. Um, and uh, now, well, let me write it here, maybe. Definition. a weak action of G on C is an action of this monoidal category on C. Um, and now let me say, uh, let me mention that inside. So if you have an element in the group, then uh, well, let's say the term if you go over C, then we have an object C, kind of skyscraper sheaf C sub G, which is an object in this category. And uh, our convolution monoidal structure is such that if we can if we convolve C G, if we convolve C G with C H. This thing is naturally isomorphic to CG times H. So therefore, if you apply, uh, if you act, so if you have an action, so I mean, action means that any object of this category, you can, you can act by means of any object of this category and object of, on, on this category. And in particular, the skyscraper sheaves act. And, uh, uh, and so in particular, we do get an action in kind of old naive sense. Yes. Well, right, and, and somehow, well, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hiding something on the rug because I'm, I'm also not using the abelian structure here, so so, so it can require some compatibility. Or at least said it. Well, I, I actually, sorry, I don't need abelian. I, I need the additive here, uh, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, also, also you, you can, this definition works if you have the inductive, but in general, you, you can have a definition Well, I mean, of course, I, I could, well, uh, the point is that, for example, I, I, I can't take coherent shifts here because, for example, coherent shifts are t typically not going to be closed on the convolution, so somehow. Uh, okay, but really, somehow, this is kind of instructive to convince yourself that, that what this thing does, I mean, I mean this, is, this is kind of a kind of typical exercise on Grothendieck language of algebraic geometry, that somehow, uh, that this is the informal idea that you have but the way to implement this informal idea in sort of growth and type language is to save this. Yeah. So, so just want to say, so suppose you have an algebra, let's say finite dimensional algebra. It, it has a group acting, algebraic group acting for automorphisms. Yes. So in this case, this group will weakly act on the category of modules of the cell. Well, yes, I mean, the, the, this actually. Right, but somehow, I mean, in the world that I want to live in later, somehow I want to assume that all categories have inductive limits. And well, yeah. So, 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 if I if, if I uh, if I if I take this as a definition, then uh, the, no, no. The, then on the category of finite dimensional models, this thing does not act. Well, okay, so let, let me take this as a definition, too. But it, it doesn't need to be... No, but it, it's, it's right. So somehow, see, if you look at this example, I said that 
This is an example. When, now, in principle, you might also say that you can take the category of coherent shifts, for example, and not, not quasi-coherent shifts. And you, want, and you might want to say that you want that to be an example. So, so in my world, this is not an example. All right, but in any case, it doesn't need to be a right? No, OK, additive. Let me say additive. Well, I mean, it doesn't even have my form like have to even has to be undo, but this oh, yeah, this, yeah, this, this okay needs to be linear. Yeah, okay, it has to be C well, uh, well, let's assume it's a different character. Okay, uh, fine. So, so now we are. Uh, uh, so, so we gave a definition. So again, so but in form, I should think about it in this way. But I told you that there's another notion, which is a strong action. So, so why would you want some, some uh, I mean, what's the source uh, uh, of, of, of having something stronger? It's also for, I mean, uh, so let's look at this informal idea. So what else can you, can you impose here? What you can impose here is the following. You can uh, impose the following additional structure. So here I said that, well, out of every object, we can construct a family. Our notion of weak action means that this family has some algebraic structure. Now, we can acquire, in addition, that this family is infinitesimally trivial or infinitesimally trivialized, which is uh, uh, a, a more mathematical way to say this is that you might want this family to have a flat connection. Uh, so let me write it here. So strong action will be the same thing. And I'll give you. Before I give a definition of strong action, I'll give you two examples similar to what I did there. So strong action, it's the same thing plus uh, flat connection on each such family along G. And uh, I'm going to, so let me give a couple of examples. Example one will be similar to this one, and example two will be of slightly different nature. Example one, again, let x be some scheme, or let's say smooth algebraic right, it doesn't matter. So assume that, again, assume that g acts on some x, which is a, well, okay, let me say just a scheme. Then you can consider, you can take c to be the category of D modules on X. And uh, kind of informal exercise convince yourself that well, this obviously has an action uh, in uh, uh, well in the of G in the usual sense, and moreover, it's I'll, I could have added the formal part of this access that that actually has a weak action in the sense I I I, I, I just defined, but I want to, but the informal part of the exercise is to show that is to sort of convince yourself that. Well, here I didn't give a formal definition, but, uh, uh, but that, that somehow informally it has exactly the structure written here. So maybe let me call this start. That it has. And actually, probably enough to do this exercise when the edit group of the field acts on a self by translation. I don't see why it's easier, but, uh, but OK. It's an informal exercise, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> uh, 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 so now let me give you another definition. So I mean, if you don't really care about D models, you might, you might, you might say, why, why, why do you actually care about so anything like this? But let me give you another exercise, uh, another example that will be a sort of, uh, if you're sort of more used to, say, traditional representation theory, then, then, then it might, you might like it more. So example two is the following. Uh, 
example two is uh, the following. Uh, let G be the Lie algebra of G. And let C be the category of G modules. Again, continuation of the informal exercise. So informal, this is informal exercise one, and this is informal exercise two, but it has exactly the same formulation as informal exercise one. So informing, so you can, if you are, of course, uh, okay, so maybe I should make a comment. Uh, so how does, in principle, group G acts here? So the point is that G acts on the Lie, it's Lie algebra, by a joint action. So therefore, we definitely have an action in the, in the kind of simplest possible sense. So if you are, uh, if you are, um, uh, if you have a module over the Lie algebra, you know, have an element of the group, you can, uh, you can use this, uh, you can use that joint action, and get another module over the Lie algebra. Now, uh, so the claim is that, first of all, this family of, uh, so if you can consider this, if you vary little g, you get an algebraic family, and moreover, infinitesimally, uh, this algebraic family is canonically trivialized. So, okay. So, so if you have a connected group and it acts on an algebra, for example, then action is strong if the action is by inner Yes, which exactly means that it sort of comes from an action of the Lie algebra. Yes. No, from a map from the Lie algebra to the Lie algebra. Yes. Uh, well, I'm not sure that if if well, if I agree with the word exactly, but I have to check this. I mean, I mean, definitely, if it is given by an automorphism, then you're right. <laughs> Whether the quantum is true, I'm actually not completely sure, and I have to check. Well, when I say I mean, this is, this is not completely, this, 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 this is not obvious, I mean. Uh, well, okay, I don't know. Actually, central extensions will come in a moment. So, okay, so let me give a definition again. And, and if, if you have, if you agreed with this definition of, uh, uh, if we agreed with this definition of uh, 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 weak action, then a strong action is just defined in a similar way. How can you disagree with the definition? Well, if you agree that this definition sort of is exactly definition, you ha is, is the formal definition which, uh, which, which um, uh, fulfills this kind of informal wish. Uh, and uh, the idea is that we can consider the category of G models on G. And as I have already mentioned earlier, Again, this uh, has a monoidal structure. Given by convolution. And the definition is that a strong action well, again, so here, if I don't want to uh, already plunge into the world of Dirac categories, I probably need to assume that G is an affine. I mean, this is actually irrelevant because you really have to live in the world of Dirac categories, but somehow, but, but uh, on the nose, this thing has, has a monodal structure only, only if you have an affine algebraic group. Uh, uh, a strong action. of uh, G on C is an action now here's a, a kind of v very very easy but 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 pretty I think cool exercise and this kind of continuation of this. So let's go back to this. So uh, if, if we're in this example, then the way uh, 
that the, the, the reason this thing has an, has an, uh, has an action of uh, uh, that you can actually act by this on g modulus on g, this is pretty clear. So you just, it's just the same as, 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 an, uh, as the definition of convolution. So, so if you have an action of g on x, then you have this action map. Uh, and uh, if you have, a, uh, say, m, which is a d module on x, and if you have some, uh, I know, a, which is a d module on g, then you can define a convolution with m to be uh, just the push forward of the exterior tensor product of A and M. So here there's no problem. And you know, in a special case when X is equal to G, this is precisely the definition of convolution. But a more interesting exercise is, is to construct, uh, well, okay, let me just say, so exercise. Construct an action of the category of D models on G on the category of modules over the Lie algebra. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, that's that, that's a good point. So, so I think that if you if you are if you get if if C is, a, is really an abelian category uh, having uh, all possible ductive limits, then the, and then at least when G is defined, then then this notion is coincide. You can show. Now the way you should be thinking about all these definitions is uh, uh, is the following. Actually, maybe I should have made this comment earlier that even when you consider just action of G as an abstract group. Well, so the idea is that when you consider just a representation of a group G, so of course, it, well, there's a notion of representation of an abstract group. There is a notion of representation of, say, algebraic group. There's a notion of representation of a Lie group. And each time it means that you have an abstract representation, maybe with some additional structure or uh, additional properties. And uh, one way to uh, say this uh, is that to say that a representation of an abstract group is, a, is the same as a module over its group algebra. And uh, then, uh, so depending, what, if the group has some additional structure, you can kind of modify the notion of group algebra appropriately. And so this is kind of what we're doing, but one categorical level up. So we're saying that notion of weak action, so, for, so now the group algebra becomes a monoidal category, and there are various monoidal categories you can associate to, to a group, uh, to, to an algebraic group. So first of all, if you have an abstract group, you can associate uh, you can associate with some kind of very stupid monoidal category. So this is just a category, uh, say, uh, which has an object for every uh, element of the group, and uh, well, say let's consider the direct sums of such, and then the monoidal structure is given by just it has to do with just multiplication of the group. But uh, then there are some various enhancements. So for example, you can consider the category of quasi and sheaves in the group. And that's one version of a group algebra. Or you can consider the category of G models. That's another version of the group algebra. And so the moment you declare what you want your group algebra to be, you have the corresponding version of the notion of representation. That's kind of how I should say. And, and so for groups, it's also for like, if you go one categorical level down, you can also do such a thing. So somehow if you have, say, an algebraic group, you can consider, various, you can consider just the group algebra on the nose, that's one thing. You can consider the algebra of polynomial. Uh, well, you can, well, group algebra is not really algebra of functions, but you can consider sort of uh, something that. Uh, you can consider algebraic Well, you can consider algebraic distributions, right? That's one version. Or you can consider the algebra of, I don't know, if you have a compact group, or, well, not just necessarily, if you have just the Lie group, you can see the algebra of some kind of compactly supported uh, C infinity functions and so, so and so on, but which you usually want to consider not as an algebra, but some kind of topological algebra. And uh, so, so, so that, that's kind of the same kind of phenomena exists uh, uh, in the world of usual representations as well. So somehow you choose what you call the relevant group algebra, and that dictates for you what kind of representations you're considering. So same thing here.
OK. Now I want, uh, so before we go back to Langlands, I need, especially before we go back to quantum Langlands, I need one slight modification of, well, one slight generalization of this. And the generalization is as follows. So generalization has to do with the case when G is endowed with a central extension, let's say by means of C star. So slight generalization um, assume that, so let one C star G tilde G one be a central extension of G. Well, I never said it's non trivial, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but 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 also, I mean, it doesn't even. Uh, well, I say th what you said is also not completely true because I, I, I mean, well, I kind of said that G is affine, but but this is not very very relevant for non-affine groups. Where, you know. Well, right, uh, yeah, that's also true. I know I, I never said G was uh, that G was. Uh, uh, I never said that G was uh, reductive. No, there is no such extension. Ah, there's no extension. No, on the level of groups, there's no extension, no, right? No, no. That, no. Right, right, right. No, there's no extension. But uh, nonetheless, OK, well, we'll consider the situation when there will be extensions. But uh, no, you're right. I mean, of course, there are no extensions. I mean, it follows from sort of classification of, well, kind of foundational results in algebraic groups that, uh, well, anyhow, that uh, it's enough to prove such effects for reductive groups. Because uh, uh, anyhow, but still, I want to. It's true that we're going to apply it to the case of loop groups, but let's just. Uh, oh, that's that's uh, that's also maybe good uh, a good thing to know because I, because I'm, I'm assuming my co my coefficients is uh, 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 c, but it's not very long. Anyhow, so let's just let me just say what what I want to say. Uh, uh, then, of course, uh, this define then. I want, so let me explain what the source of uh, why I want a modification. So, so I said that one example of a strong action for me is an action of the group G on the category of modules over the Lie algebra. But now, uh, if I have a central extension, I can consider uh, some twisted version of the category of GMO. So choose some complex number. So let then cons consider, so let capital C be the category of GC modules, which means that uh, IE modules over G tilde. So again, let me, as before, let me choose a generator here, which I'll call one, uh, on which one acts. I see. Then uh, this will. So I, actually, maybe I should say that uh, what I want to define. So for any number, I want to. Define the notion of a strong action of G on a category C of level little c. And this thing should be an example of such. Uh, 
of of this. Maybe uh, let me say another source of examples is the following. So suppose that I have, as before, suppose that my g x on the variety x. But suppose that in addition that now let x uh, let sorry l be a line bundle over x. which is not g equivariant, but which is g tilde equivariant. So if g acts on x, in particular g tilde also on x on x, and the center x trivially, but nonetheless, you can, you, you, I mean, uh, you can have a line bundle which is equivalent with respect to g tilde, and, and that, uh, that structure does not descend to equivalence over, with respect to g. Then, uh, as before, we can then consider, so we discussed last time, then for any complex number, we can consider the category of uh, what, what we call capital C, the category of twisted modules. So one way I, I defined it last time is by means of saying that these are models actually in the total space of this line bundle, with the d models in the total space of this line bundle without zero with some <coughs> conditions. <coughs> there are some other ways to define it, but uh, that's kind of what we discussed last time. And then this thing will have, uh, this hand has action of, strong action of G of level C. Um, and uh, the actual definition is something that uh, you can easily guess now. And uh, so it's gui if you are guided by the same principles I tried to explain, namely the actual definition. So maybe before I say the actual definition, let me, let me say it in this informal language. In this informal language, uh, somehow strong, so weak action was saying that any such family should have an algebraic structure. Strong action means that not only that it has an algebraic structure, but in addition it has a flat connection, so it's infinitesimally trivial. And now I wanted to have not a flat, not, not a flat connection, but some kind of twisted flat connection. So this central extension uh, on G, so in particular, defines a line bundle on, over G, and this defines for me a notion of twisted. Uh, you can, well, yes, but th there's a kind of notion of C-twisted connection. And uh, uh, so, uh, but again, the formal definition is as follows. We uh, say that C has a strong action of G of level C, if C has an action of the monoidal category D sub C G models of this twisted D models on G. So note that if we take that as a definition, it only knows. So we discussed the notion of twisted D models as invariant under shifting C by an integer. So, so the notion of twisted D models is also invariant under that. OK. So this was kind of abstract formalism. And now we want to apply this abstract formalism to some particular situation. Now, the difficulty there will be, well, maybe a technical difficulty will be that, uh, that, I, I, that I'm actually going to ignore is that we'll actually have to take G to be in some kind of infinite dimensional gr group, namely it will be the loop group. But uh, OK. Any questions about this? Uh, where? I mean, on this board? I use that this notion of twisted G models next depends on the line bundle. Yes, but in this definition. 
I used, no, I didn't use this line, but this was an example. This, this was not a definition, this was an example. So I claim that if you take this as a definition, then this will be an example of this definition, that you can convolve twisted d models on G with twisted, with twisted d models on X, if this line bundle is equivariant with respect to G tilde. Then what, well, uh, what, what do you mean? Which, which, which part would make sense? That's, that, well, yes, the, 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 that's actually right. Okay, so the, the, this is a good remark, but, but since I wanted to actually have this example, I didn't, uh, it, would, it was convenient for me to form it this way, but the remark is that, okay, maybe I should put a remark here. Well, on. remark, the definition, I mean, this definition only depends On the on G tilde, not not on capital G tilde, and this is because actually, if you think carefully about this category, about this notion of twisted model on G, it, it only depends on uh, but but actually, this remark about uh, shifting by an integer, not changing the notion, this is true only if you have oh, yeah. only if it has it from, from uh, if it comes from here. So, so if you have a Sorry, say it, say it again. So you can suppose G tilde maps for some associative algebra in such a way. G tilde is a group or, or, or an algebra? Yes. In such a way that one maps to C. And uh, this action integrates uh, the corresponding action by conjugation integrates the reaction of the group. Th then, then you will get such a right? action. Yes. Yeah, yes. But actually, what I said before about you know, the morphisms, the, the corners of the statement is definitely not true because somehow an example is that, so we said that an example of a. No, I said the group should act like. No, okay, sorry, I don't know if it's a. Anyhow. Yeah, you're right. So it should be a map from the group to the multiplicative group of the algebra. Not to the, not just to the. Well, okay. Uh, so the map to the, to a, a, in should lead to the map to the multiplicative group of the. Okay, I have an exercise for you. Formulate what you're saying as an exercise. <laughs> <laughs> and then solve it. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, now uh, let me go back to Langlands. Yes. Well, if you write the definition, you will see. Uh, just if you write the diagram, you will see that, that we, I mean, that, that kind of cancels out. Uh, yes. Yes. You know, the, the, uh, uh, we we just the notion of weak action was defined only for motivational purposes. Oh, fine. So, uh, so the actions will so so from now on, unless otherwise stated, all actions are strong. But but in fact, I mean, there will be notion. See, the notion of 
I'm going to now mention actions of some level, notion of action of some level exists only for strong action. There's no such thing for a weak action in principle. Well, just if you look at this category, I claim that this category depends only on the, on the extension of Lewy algebra. Well, maybe, maybe I, need, I need for this G to be connected or something. Uh, no, even that I don't need. So no, it, it, don't, it, don't, it, it only depends on, uh, on the on extension of the Lewy algebra. So, so let's say in this example of high temperature, uh, so we could get the amoidals on the plane, but which doesn't depend on C, but the monoidal structure depends on C. Have to think. Let's let's not discuss. I mean, I, I, you know, I didn't think about this in advance. I can't. I can't really answer this. Uh, okay. Now, really, we want to apply to the case when G is a loop group. And uh, so I said that in, in that case, the C should really, if you want to be careful, should be thought of not as a number, but as some kind of invariant bilinear form on the Lie algebra, uh, which is actually what we should do if we want to be careful. But I'm I'm kind of informally going to think about this as a number. So, so want to apply it, apply this to uh, G of K instead of G and G sum reductive group. Now I'm going to form the conjecture. Well, and uh, I'm going to discuss how, uh, well, maybe let me put it on this board, how uh, precise this conjecture is. So let me actually put it in, well, uh, I'm hesitating so whether I should put the word in conjunction in quotation marks. I'm, I'm going to then make it more precise over there. Uh, so many, many years ago, Bernstein taught me a, a nice word in English. And it's the word suspecture. <laughs> but I think suspecture is kind of weaker than conjunction quotation marks. Because conjunction quotation marks means that with mild modifications, this uh, the statement is, is true. And, and suspecture, I think, means something that Something weaker than that. So let me uh, let me. Uh, so actually, Jeff Green has another approach. He, uh, he had the word question. <laughs> so, so, so no, no. If he asked some question, usually he suspected that the answer was yes. So <laughs> he, 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 they essentially were conjectures, but he never actually called them. Well, I still want to call it a conjecture, but I want to uh, quotation marks. So again, quotation marks means, means uh, I'm going to comment uh, what it means uh, 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 in a little while. So, uh, uh, so uh, this is quantum local geometric one which Tomorrow, as I said, uh, it will be uh, uh, also related to some kind of gauge theory story. This is also go goes on. Uh, this also goes to relate. I mean, since this is a mathematical physics school, this is also related to uh, S duality for gauge theories. Um. So uh, the conjecture is, uh, says that there exists a uh, well, kind of canonical equivalence of two categories. So categories with action of G of K. of level C. And so this time, it, it's going to look completely symmetric. So here, I'm going to write categories. So I think that there's a very 
uh, important notational difference between what I'm talking about, what Roman was talking about, that I, I always denote the Langlois dual group by G check, and he always denotes it by G L. <laughs> but I always feel awkward writing this L on the left. So, uh, uh, and, uh, so um, it's not out of lack of respect for Langlois, but uh, uh, this but is you just. Can write I, well, I, I think he actually sometimes he sometimes wrote on the right, but still, I mean, writing this L there, I kind of feel awkward. Uh, characters with action of G check of K of level minus one over C. There, yes, there was no here. There is minus. You, you, if I have, if I have enough time, I will explain why there is minus here. And there, there was no minus yesterday, uh, uh, but probably I won't have enough time. Anyhow, so so that's the correct formulation. Now, kind of and one. It's supposed to be true for any C on read for positive. Uh, no, this is supposed to be, well. See this. Uh, 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 no, I mean with the. With the right modification, it should be true for any C. But uh, let me just let me just make some comments about it. So first of all, let me let, let me give you an exercise. This is just elim an elementary exercise. Elementary exercise. Well, remember that by the way that our C that uh, this I should remind that the way it's written, it's kind of important that uh, uh, that our notion of level for loop groups includes a shift by dual Coxeter number. So it's incl includes a shift. It includes what's called critical shift. So the, 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 this, this is important here. So exercise <coughs> define minus 1 over C in the language of bilinear forms. So actually, this thing makes sense the way I wrote it, only if G is a simple group. <coughs> because only then I can think about that thing as a number. And then actually, it is what, what's written. But actually, you can, you, can, you, can, you can say what it means in the language of bilinear forms. So the idea is that Langlois duality for groups or for Lie algebras is, de is, de is designed precisely in such a way that, uh, uh, um, at least non-degenerate uh, uh, invariant bilinear forms on G and on G check are the same. Yes. I'm sorry? A category of what? No. This is, this is much bigger, first of all. I mean, you can, well, first of all, this is two categories, right? It's a, it's a category of categories with, so we can. This character doesn't change. And this if you add minus one over C. Uh, so in particular, this one also should not change, but this, uh, this absolute is not obvious. So does it mean that you have some kind of SL2C action? Uh, yes. I mean, I mean so, well, uh, right. I mean, uh, I mean, especially if G is the same. For, for instance, if G is E8. Uh, no, but I mean, you will have an action of some index to subgroup. Right. No, no, exactly. No, for, of course. I mean, I mean th this is exactly what happens in this duality story, right? So, for GLN, yes, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, you have a you have an, an exactly SL two Z action of G is isomorphic to G dual. If G is the same as G dual, then. In general, you get action of some index 2. Well, index 2, I maybe sometimes index 3. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, anyhow, so, so this is the idea. So, let me make some remarks about this, and then we'll make a break. So, remark one is that this actually should be thought as, well, okay, so maybe remark one is that. 
this is this should be I mean this is a conjecture this should be true as stated if C is not rational Very much so. Well, I mean, how how do you know it's, it Maybe doesn't? It's the same for us. But well, I mean, it's definitely not canonically the same. I mean, it's no. I mean, it's. I mean, I mean, there's absolutely no reason for that. Uh, so, well, I didn't finish the sentence, by the way. Provided. Everything is done on derived, or I should say, DG level. So, if you, for those people who are kind of familiar, or at least have heard this language, this should be actually an equivalent of an infinity two categories of DG categories, and you know, without all the structure and so on. But again, this is some technical difficulty I'm going to hide under the rug. But the point is that if you if you have enough categorical machinery in your pocket then this is actually, for a rational C, this is just, this should be true on the nose. Uh, uh, remark two is that this statement is, uh, well, for a rational C, some modifications are needed, some actually very, some kind of mild modifications are needed. But let's actually kind of ignore that fact. Let's actually, but let's look at this a little bit more closely, but, but the transformation C goes to mi minus one over C. So the point is that there is something, uh, there's some part of it which is kind of missing. And the part which is kind of missing from here is, see that, of course, if, you're, if C is some number, then minus one over C is also a number, except for one case, namely when C is zero. So if C is zero, then minus one over C is infinity. Yeah. So, so somehow we define the notion of categorical action of level infinity. But we did not define the action, uh, the, uh, what happens when level, uh, so, sorry, we defined the notion of categorical action of the loop group at any level C, but, but from here it's clear that we should also have this notion of level infinity. By the way, note that all rational numbers C are equivalent under this SNGC. True, but again. But th this, uh, th th this is actually not completely right because in the rational case, um, it has. And I, in fact, it's, I think it's not known exactly how it should be modified. I mean, nobody thought about for actually finite rational C. So th there's a formulation when you get zero and infinity, then th there's a kind of. Problem. But again, l l let me ignore this for now. Just the, the, the thing I do want to say is that we also need the notion. Of action at level infinity, and so I'm going to tell you the answer, but the answer is not going to look like uh, uh, it, it will not be completely. Well, I mean, in principle, since I'm making a definition, I can put whatever I want here, but uh, but there is some motivation for putting what I'm going to put here in a moment. And uh, uh, and uh, and again, it will be an informal exercise. Convince yourself that it is, it is natural to, to to do what I'm going to do next. So the idea is that okay, my, I wanted to make a break. Maybe you know what? Let's actually make a break for five minutes, and then um, I'm going to answer this question. So the idea is that yeah, just uh, I'll say one sentence that I did discuss this category a little bit, the categorical local angles without uh, without the word quantum. And, uh, and then there was no C, and I want to sort of make a connection to that. So, but for this, I'll have to a little bit say what I mean by action, uh, by what should, what should replace the notion of action on some level when this level is actually infinity. Okay, let's make a break for five minutes. 
And so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to discuss examples. I'm going to discuss examples. What if some, uh, I'm going to put some specific categories here, and I'm going to tell you what they go over to here. Let me, so I promise that, so, so I said that we need to discuss the, uh, what we mean by um, action at level infinity. So let me forget about the stuff for a moment. Let me discuss something general. So suppose that, so I want to talk about the notion of uh, category over an algebraic variety or over a scheme or more generally maybe over an algebraic stack or something like that. So let me do it first over a scheme. So let S be a scheme. So what is a category over S or a family of categories over S? It's definitely interesting. So I discussed in some detail, the, well, after I do what I'm doing right now, uh, what I did in the very first lecture would be exactly the proof of this when C, when C is 0. Uh, and when C is not 0, uh, it's definitely a good exercise to do this, which uh, uh, I have more or less done, but I think it's not written anywhere. So I just, exactly in the beginning of the week, I, so there are two main experts on this stuff. It's Dennis Gisger and Sam Raskin. So they both say that it's easier, but, uh, but, but, uh, but so, so Dennis told me that Sam should know where it is written, and Sam told me that Dennis should know where it is written. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, uh, uh, so, so most probably, but, Mm. Uh, so, uh, most probably means that it's not written any, any, anywhere, and uh, you know anybody in the, in the audience is welcome to. <laughs> so, if you, if, so you know, we have some homework problems, but but sometimes you know, uh, you know, for like advanced courses, sometimes in some addition to homework, you you, you might you might want to do a project. Yeah. So, if you want to do a project, uh, just write down the uh, the proof of this for G being the <laughs> uh, being the multiplicative group. No, no, Dennis and Sal will grade the project. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so let me discuss just uh, this. So, well, and uh, what is it? So, so here I really want to assume that C is, uh, well, additive or a billion category, billion or additive ca category with inductive limits. Um, well, assume that first S is an affine scheme. So assume that uh, then the notion is really easy. Assume S is spec of some algebra A. Then what it means to have a category over S is the same as to have a category over A. And this is some notion that even I can understand. So this, is, this just means that so category C, so let's say that C is a category over S, it's equivalent to saying that C is a linear. So, in other words, you know, for pe for for people who know these words, it means that A maps into the Bernstein center of C. So, in other words, um, uh, Bernstein center it means that we have, we have a map from A to endomorphisms of the identity functor on C. But in down to earth terms, it means that a, the algebra A acts on every object in an factorial way. Now, an easy lemma says the fault. So here, of course, we don't need any assumption about having all possible inductive limits and so on. But if you do make this assumption, and, uh, and uh, then uh, and, uh, also if you require that this thing is, so I think for what I'm going to say, you really need to require this abelian. <coughs> then we can show that, well, under these assumptions, then there's a lemma that this structure this structure is equivalent to C being 
a module category. over the monoidal category of A modules. And so A is a commutative algebra, so the category of A modules is monoidal, and the tensor product is just tensor product over A. So you can show that the structures are really the same. So for example, if you, if you get here as A linear, you can tensor, and not, well, if you make this assumption, you can tensor every object by every A module. So, okay, if you want the exercise, prove this. But the nice thing about this is that uh, nice thing about this is that it um, uh, makes sense even when the scheme is not defined. So if S is general, is a general scheme, or even stacks, so if, and the only stacks that will be relevant for us are just things which are written as quotients of schemes, but as quotients, stacks quotients of scheme by some algebraic group, or maybe in the algebraic group. And so in that case, it's relatively clear how to define quasi kevin sheaves on them, on stacks, then by definition, uh, category, well, OK. Let me finish the sentence, and then I'll make a comment. So what I'm saying here is a slight lie, but somehow this slight lie uh, uh, is uh, uh, will not be relevant for us. Uh, so, okay, let me finish the sentence. Over S is the same as action category C. C. Now, just a remark is that, well, this is true for all S that will be relevant for us, but uh, in principle, this is literally true. Well, I mean, th this is actually a slightly better definition. And the point is that the definition you have to, actually, the correct definition is you have to take this and shifify it with respect to S. So we can actually sort of, uh, so you want this definition to be sort of local on S. And, uh, and, uh, and that's the same as having global definition if S is what's called one affine. There's such a notion, and uh, uh, and uh, but again, all kind of nice schemes of stacks that will appear uh, in this lectures will be one, one defined, so you don't have to worry about this. But in principle, uh, uh, the actual definition is slightly more complicated, and for certain stacks, it's really important too. True. But uh, it's uh, equivalent to uh, considering uh, like a, a, a you know categorical version of locally ring. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But somehow, uh, but uh, but you know, but let's not l l l l l let's not discuss it. I mean, l l l let's ignore it. I mean, if you want, to can discuss afterwards. But this is really not the point I want to discuss in the lecture. But let me just say that this is actually a pretty cool thing for the following reason that somehow you know, in representation theory. When you study any kind of category of representations, more or less one of the first questions you ask yourself is what is the center of that category? So for example, when you, when you, have, uh, when you study representations for semi-simple Lie algebras, then I mean, if you have any kind of uh, associative algebra, then uh, the center of the category of modules is the center, uh, well, is essentially the center of, uh, of that, uh, of that uh, algebra. Well, it's actually literally the center of the algebra. So, so for example, for semi-simple Lie algebra, there's harsh under homomorphism, which immediately tells you what is uh, what is the uh, what is the center of uh, uh, of uh, the universal developing algebra with semi-simple Lie algebra, and so in particular, what is the center of the category of G models. Now, this notion is kind of funny because it generalizes that because sometimes it says that that you should be actually thinking about. Uh, Sometimes you should be thinking about something more general. So sometimes you might have an 
interesting category of representations, for example, which doesn't have any center at all. But it might have a but, uh, but the point is that it, it still might have some kind of interesting center, but the center is just not in a fine scheme. And it, uh, so let me give an, uh, an example, some, con well, it's a conjecture of Bjelenson, actually. Suppose that, uh, let's take G to be a, say, simple Lie algebra. And let C be a negative integer. And let capital C be the category of G sub C modules. Then there's a conjecture of Bellinson. G hat, G hat. Conjecture of Bellinson. All conjecture of Bellinson, but which is almost known, but I think it and exactly this formulation is not known that that this C uh, leaves over it's a category over S, which is local systems on the formal punctured disk with respect to G check. So it means G check bundles on on uh, on D star with flat connection. Now the point is that this is some kind of uh, so in particular, this notion of central character for this category, which is a, which is a local system. Uh, so, so the point is that this is some stack uh, which has trivial algebra of global functions. So, that, and so it's known that this category does not have, uh, does not have, I mean, remember that I always, when I talk about level, I, I have this critical shift. So this category is known not to have, uh, uh, is to have trivial center in the, in the usual sense. All modules. Well, all kind of topolo by, by all modules. I mean, okay, maybe I should say this. Anytime I say modules over the finally also so if I have this G of T, then I always think that I always talk only about continuous models. So somehow, if I have action of this on the module, then somehow, and I have any element in this module, and then I cry that there exists some n such that T to the n G square brackets T kills n. So we we'll only can see the such modules. So this is what module means. But uh, uh, but so we can see the category of all modules, and the, the claim is that the conjecture is that it should leave over this, and so it means that it does have a big center, but the center is not defined, and moreover, it's very strongly not defined. It doesn't have any global functions, so there, so therefore, in kind of a naive way, you don't see the center. But uh, 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 and so, for example, there's a there's a very nice old paper of Bellinson where he explains this for the Heisenberg Lie algebra. You do have blocks. Yes, you do have. Yes, you do have blocks. So for uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you do, yes, you do have blocks corresponding to different points here, but somehow there's no centering kind of in the in the in the in the naive sense to to to, to sort of. Uh, why? You, you, the local systems mean in, are, uh, this is the RAM local systems. Flat connections, but so, but, but then mo monodrum is not an allowed procedure. No, 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 you, can, you can't do this. So see, it's it's a difference between C star and C mod Z. C star has a lot of functions. C mod Z has no functions. So and algebraically, so for you, you have things like C mod Z. I mean, in fact, an exercise, given what we did in the very first lecture, actually, in the beginning of the second lecture, in the case when G is the multiplicative proof, show, prove that the algebra of functions on this thing is, is, is trivial. OK. Uh, where is this cloth?
Well, I'm, I'm going to give some actually very simple example in a moment, as I should have <coughs> said this before. So maybe an, an example I want to uh, give is that if x is some scheme or stack mapping to S, then the category of quasi coherent sheaves on X leaves over S by definition. That's maybe the example I should have started with. So now, so psychological theorem. It means that, uh, well, when you see the formulation, <laughs> maybe it will clarify the, the, your question. When C is equal to infinity, the notion of G of K action of, maybe let me say, when C goes to infinity. Well, uh, action of level C becomes, or a notion of category with, of category with G of K action of level C becomes the notion of category over This. Now let me recall what this thing is. So we actually discussed it in, 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 in a lot of detail when G was the multiplicative group, but in general, so log C is G, G star, this is a space of principal G bundles with connection. Star. And that's actually some quotient stack, uh, kind of maybe not non algebraic quotient stack. So, namely, so while G, we all assume G is connected, and so any, uh, any principal G bundle is trivial. So, if we trivialize it, then connection is just given by one form. And, uh, and then uh, what there are equivalences given by gauge transformations, which, which which are responsible for changing the trivialization. So what this thing really is, it's a quotient of a, of a vector space by our group G of K. So remember that we had this omega 1 D star, so there's just one forms. So we should tensor this with G. And then we should take the quotient of that by G of K, where this action is the action by gauge transformation. So this action is G of omega is, well, let me write it as if it were G land, G omega G inverse. So this is a joint action plus G inverse DG. Why not? Ah, uh, G, 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 okay, right, so, oh, yes, okay, otherwise it's not an action, okay. So this is gauge transformations. So if, if so, you want if I what g omega g inverse, then the, 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 I should have written dg times g. Okay. The, the. Ah, okay. Let's let's do it this way. No, I, sh I should probably I should probably put g inverse on the other side. Shouldn't you? But, well, okay. Well, well. well, okay. Let's let's leave it like this. Uh, so, uh, right. So, so the psychological theorem is that you can actually 
kind of convince yourself it's really not a mathematical statement, it's a psychological statement that it is natural to do this. <laughs> that uh, that when, you, when you send level to infinity, that the structure of a category with uh, this action degenerates to, to this. <laughs> so, so, well, I'm not going to prove the psychological theorem because of lack of time, but well, or maybe I will discuss it a little bit uh, next, next time, but let me just sort of use that as a definition of what happens here when uh, this guy becomes infinity. And uh, then, uh, then it is related to, to what I was saying before. So then, again, uh, I mean, in this case, as I said, so, so uh, there's some mild modification that you need to, uh, you need to uh, introduce here. But uh, this is something I'm going to ignore. So if I ignore this, then basically I want to say that categories with action of G of K of level 0, so I mean, in other words, categories which are model categories over the category of D models from G of K are the same as categories which live over the stack of local systems for the dual group. Well, no, no actually, no, no I, I, I don't really agree. In some sense, uh, I mean, psychological theorems are the most interesting to prove in some sense. Uh, OK. Now I want to discuss some examples. <laughs> well, and of course, well, there's some sort, there's some list of examples where you have to just, well, declare what you expect based on basically experience. But say, well, but these declarations will be pretty natural. Uh, well, sometimes they're pretty natural, and sometimes they're actually, uh, they're, they're, they're actually motivated by, but by, by what thesis do. So somehow, in a, in, a, in a different language, in the language of boundary conditions for four-dimensional gauge theories, all of this was extremely extensively studied by physicists. <laughs> so somehow, so there are like, so physicists have produced, Ill so now we can play a game of uh, uh, sort of start, start with some ca natural category here and just ask where does it go here. Now, before we play this game in particular examples, let me say that, you know, this is some conjectural equivalence, so we, what, what, what the hell can we know about this? So, I mean, how, how to test that something that, I mean, we made the guess, how to test that the guess is right. Now, one thing is that, so if you really believe in this as an equivalence of two categories, one thing is the following. Suppose that C1 and C2 are two categories on with uh, so let me call this uh, some notation here. Uh, psi G sub C. Uh, are two categories with action of G of K of level C. Then, you know, this thing is forming two categories, so we can see the home between this over G of K, so to say. You know, usually when you have two representations of a group, home between is a vector space. Now here, we go one categorical level up. So, uh, and so this, is, this thing is a category. But now, if we think that this thing is an equivalence of two categories, that means that this, and in many cases, this thing is going to be sort of, for some particular C1 and C2, this thing is going to be also explicitly computable. So this thing is the same as home over G check of K, psi G sub C, C1, psi G sub C, C C2. And that's another category. And if we, uh, and so if we can sort of guess, we have some nice C1 and C2, and we have some expectations about what the Langlands dual category. So the Langlands dual categories, as categories, typically are going to look completely different. Uh, 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 
except for maybe one example. So, so typically, they would do completely different categories. But if we can see the whole categories, then it should be the same category. Right? And now, it's just a category with no structure, a priori. And, uh, and now, all <coughs> No, no, everything, every, of course, everything is DG. No, no, but I mean, word category, if, if, you, if you do things carefully, the word category always means the G, the G category. But I said that I'm going to completely hide this under the rug. So, uh, uh, so but it's just a category. And, and, and what you have here, uh, what you get is an equivalence of categories. And the slogan is that all equivalence of equivalences of categories that I mentioned that Roma mentioned at least with characteristic zero coefficients, and, and he's going to mention the all parts, especially those which are formed at a derived level, which are of derived categories, they all arise in this way. That uh, somehow the categories that you studied, they arise as home categories between some categories with this structure, and then we'll sort of know what happens when we apply Langlands, and then. So, and, and this is kind of the thing that I wanted to. Get to it, at least in some examples. So, so, so when you uh, have this type of equivalence, which we call now the Buchmarita equivalence of monoidal categories, uh, usually uh, what you need to, for this is to construct a bimodal case. Sure. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's definitely an equivalent uh, uh, question. And well, yes, and well, some sense, well, yes, but I won't talk about. It. I mean, no, I mean, there's, there's no explicit guess. There are some kind of uh, there are some conjectural constructions. So in terms of vertex algebras, in, in terms of this uh, W algebra, no, 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 double algebra duality is something that sort of maybe follows from this. But I mean, it's, it's kind of compatible with it. But but no, but. Well, I can tell you afterwards. So, somehow, so, so, so you can construct it out of, so basically you want to construct a vertex algebra which contains Katsumudi algebra for G level C and Katsumudi algebra for G dual of level minus one over C. And uh, if you have such a vertex algebra, then you can construct a module category as you want. And well. Well, I don't know what, well, okay. Let's not discuss it right now. Let's not discuss anything which is not written on the board. <laughs> And since I'm racing right now. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I can erase them pretty quickly. OK. So now we're finally, we're finally ready to try to discuss examples. And the examples I want to discuss, there will be, so maybe some of the most interesting cases are really, at least some of the, the ones which are kind of related to some other stuff have to do with the cases when c is equal to 0 and minus 1 over c is equal to infinity. But, uh, uh, but it will be kind of more instructive to first formulate these examples for a kind of finite c and 1, 1 over c, and then consider the limit. So, uh, so basically, I want to look at two examples. Uh, so example 1 will be the category, will be the case when c is the category of well, twisted D modules on uh, the fine gross minor image. All D modules. And example two, from what I said before, it's, it's a very natural example. This example when C is equal to more hat. Models of Katsumori algebra. Now, mm, so so what I, if you want, what I'm going to say is a strengthening of that Langlands conjecture. So uh, so where does this go on the side? So the claim is that on the side, this goes to d minus. So essentially, just goes to itself. There's no equivalence. Because 
I can't put any equivalence because uh, if I uh, because if I put equivalence, I lose the structure, I lose the G of K action. I, I need a category with G of K action. So equivalence will appear the moment I. In fact, the same is also supposed to be true for the. Uh, but I won't discuss it because of lack of time. Same thing should be true for when I replace the grass minor by a fine flag, right? Now, uh, and uh, 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 if I do this, then the following thing EP, uh, so uh, let me tell you the answer. And, uh, and so the answer, this answer actually appears also in physics under the name of non-pole. And uh, uh, so this is d minus 1 over c. Uh, uh, sorry, not d. Uh, this is, um, say this. Well, let me write it and then. Uh, so let me say at least d minus 1 over c modules on g check of k which are Whitaker. Well, I'll spend some time discussing this example. So, so if you're not comfortable with Whitaker right now, you can actually ignore it for now. Whitaker on, on the right. So, okay, let's actually uh, play a little bit with this. So, so this is this is part of the conjecture. And uh, now let's play with this example examples a little bit. So, first of all, let's look at the first rule. Well, I said that one way to get something more down to earth from this is to consider home categories. Now, uh, you can do a following exercise. Well, again, for this to be, to be true, we really have to do something on DG level. But you know, uh, uh, so now I'm getting slightly informal, because what I'm going to say is literally true if you sort of use the correct categorical machinery. Otherwise, it's uh, just, again, a sort of psychological statement that home from uh, G modules on the affine Grassmannian to any C home over G of K is the same as the category of, well, let me put it like this. This is the category of G of O equivariant objects. So just first of all, the, the claim is that there, there is such a notion. What is C? C is anything. Well, what name, I mean, C, I mean, the way I mean, from what's written, any category endowed with a G of K action of level C. Uh, so, you mean strong, strong uh, well, yes. Yeah, so for a strong action, there is a notion of strongly equivariant uh, objects and. Uh, this is uh, uh, now. Let me just note that, in order to make sense of this, I'm also using the fact that I already mentioned before that the central extension splits over GFO. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't. Because I, get, I, I have to say that over GFO, the action of level C on when restricted to GFO, it's a, it's 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 an actual action of just GFO level zero. So. In particular, we get the following kind of conjecture, which is actually theorem, which follows from the work of uh, Finkelberg and Lysenko. Theorem uh, if we take DC modules uh, on the affine Grassmannian. Which are G of O equivariant. Well, let me actually put G of O just to be compatible with this notation. Let me put G of O equivariants here. 
to note that if you if have twisting by zero, or, or as a matter of fact, by any integer, that's, that's the same as our Sataki category. But now I really want to stress that everything is derived. So somehow this is, this is the derived Sataki category, and which Rom again talked quite a bit about today. Then this thing is d minus 1 over c on, on Grassmann and g check. This is kind of funny because I mean, say so that this is this is interesting. And C is a rational number, actually. So, uh, so if C is a rational number, then uh, then this category is actually equivalent to, well, because for abelian categories, the category. I mean, in that case, it actually holds on the on level of abelian categories as well, uh, and that that thing uh, is uh, the uh, the abelian category is the category of representation of some algebraic group. And, th and that will also be a category of substantial sum algebraic group. And the claim is that that's actually, that's actually the same algebraic group. So, so no, 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 no. For a, uh, for a rational number here. Well, anyhow, so. See, so l I want to actually consider the example when, well, okay, we discussed that last, last time, so. Um, right, so, uh, so what I want to say is that if c if c becomes zero and c goes to and c what one over c is equal to infinity, then actually well I don't have really time so I want to put then I want to just say that uh, psi zero so psi g zero of this just d modulus on the fine grass minion. Well, if you sort of do this psychological exercise I gave you before, and then, uh, then it will also tell you how to sort of send this number to infinity here. And what this thing becomes, it just becomes, if you want, uh, quasi-coherent sheaves on just the following guy, on just point mod g check. And well, this point mod g check should be thought of as the as the modular space of local systems with respect over G check on D rather than on D star. So on the non-punctured disk. So and this way it obviously seats inside log Cs G check D star. So in particular quasi coherent sheaves on that thing are acted on by quasi coherent sheaves on, on here. And this is actually from the point of view of classical angles correspondence. This is a very, very natural thing to do. So you're saying that uh, sort of, uh, I mean, if you go to sort of number theoretic situation, then they're saying that functions on g of k mod g of o sort of correspond to exactly those Galois representation, to, to essentially trivial Galois representation. What Galois representation was geometrically trivial. So it, I mean, in the in number theoretic situation, there's also Frobenius. So here there's no Frobenius. So somehow, but, but which is geometrically trivial. And that means that we have here d rather than d star. So that's, from that point of view, it's a very natural statement. But now we can do the following. We can, we can consider, again, the endomorphism category of this. And if we consider the endomorphism category of this, we get the derived Sataki category, more almost by definition. If we consider the endomorphism category of this, uh, we get, so, OK. Uh, OK, the theorem is that. Again, I'm ignoring here some mild technical details, but I just want to explain what happens. So, so from this, we get equivalence between, well, OK, let me write a statement which is correct, and then, uh, and, and, but uh, uh, between 
Uh, and for this, I really have to sort of I can see, look, I have to work with categories which do not have inductive limits. If I, if I work with categories which do have inductive limits, then sli some slight modification is needed. And that actually has to do with the fact that at level c equal to 0 and infinity, the whole statement of Langlands correspondence needs some modification. So I get uh, uh, an equivalence between boundary derived categories of G models are sheaves on, on the fine Grassmannian. And now this time just coherent, well, derived, boundary derived category of coherent sheaves on the following gadget, on the following derived guy. So I should consider po uh, point. Uh, uh, times point uh, over G check quotient by G check. Now what uh, let me sort of decipher this a little bit. So first of all, what does it actually mean? Means that I consider in the same that uh, so here I can put group or Lie algebra, it doesn't matter. So here I should consider this is the uh, what is the algebra of functions of this and this? Algebra of functions is going to be some, oh well, let's ignore, ignore this first of all. What, what is this derived scheme? Derived scheme, it's an affine derived scheme, so it corresponds to just some differential graded algebra. And this differential graded algebra is just, well, C. C times C over functions on G check. And that thing is uh, nothing else but just uh, uh, exterior algebra. So this thing is exterior algebra of G check, dual space to G check, well, which, which is put in uh, homological degree minus 1. And when we consider coherent sheaves on this, which mean, it means we can see the DG modules over this. And if we take the quotient of by G check, it means that we can see the DG modules over this, such that they are in addition endowed with the compatible action of G check. And uh, so Roma mentioned Kazil duality today, which he's going to talk about next time. And if you know enough about Kazil duality, then we can show that, that uh, modules over this, well, let me write semi-direct product with G-check, meaning derived category of DG modules over this, which are endowed with a compatible action of G-check. That's the same. Well, with some finely generated assumptions, this is the same as modules over seam G-check shifted to the right by 2, again, semi-direct product. Just to check. So this thing is Kazil uh, uh Sorry, it's not. Right, so I have to write mod here. So everything actually has to be finely generated for, for this. And if you drop the condition for finally, it's actually interesting what happens if you drop the condition for finally generating this, but I will not talk about this. So what I want to say is that, and so this is the statement of derived Sadaki the way I formulated it and the way Roma formulated this today. And it kind of, uh, it should be thought of as a special case of, uh, of, uh, uh, of this kind of Langlois story of this, well, it follows from, this expectation when c is 0 minus 1 over c is infinity, and when I can see the sort of endomorphism category on the left and on the right, then you get this equivalence. Well, like I said, so in principle, it should work with co-complete categories, with categories which, which have all possible inductive limits, and then actually get some, funny mo some slight modification of this. But let me not go into this. So maybe, so I, I have to stop. So let me say just one more thing. Then, uh, I don't know, is Roma here or not? He's not here. Okay. Are you going to talk about your 
main equivalence. I'm sorry? So, uh, so Roma's main equivalence is about uh, uh, or uh, series of main equivalences, let me say like this. This is about various categories of sheaves uh, or derived categories of sheaves on the affine flag variety rather than on the affine Grassmannian. And uh, which are equivalent either with respect to GO4 or with respect to Wahori, or maybe with respect to any point radical of Wahori. And that thing you can actually, well, at least when it's GO4 or Wahori, you can also get from here because this, there's one more row here which I didn't have time to uh, write. It's namely that exactly the same thing should hold when a set of defined grass mine and I put here a defined flag variety. And, uh, and that means that, so actually here, let me say, it, uh, maybe that will be the last thing I'm going to say that uh, so what follows from what's, what's written here is that if I have some C which is a category with G sorry of K action of level C and C can be zero now and C check is psi G C of C, this is the Slangless transform, then from what we said that is that C of G of O, this category of strongly equivalent objects, should be the same as C check, G check of O. Well, okay, so this is literally the case when C is not zero. When C is zero, there's an appropriate modification here, which I basically mentioned how to, how to guess what it is and uh, well I can maybe later next time I can describe it in more detail and the idea is that same thing is true for Wahori so if we take the uh, so if we take the Wahori group for G then these things are also should be equivalent but if you go to some smaller groups than the Wahori then somehow the, then it completely breaks completely breaks down and so if you understand what the statement means when the levels are equal to zero and infinity, and uh, uh, then, uh, by, then you can actually get this equivalences that, uh, of this Rukovnikov, you can explain why these equivalences become part of this general Langlands story. And there you get actually kind of Pretty funny statement. I mean, I mean, sta I mean, statement is that certain derived category of constructible sheaves is equal to a certain derived category of coherent sheaves on some variety, on some stack, and you can actually guess what kind of stack it is by by these considerations. Uh, okay. <laughs> so next time, maybe I'll say a few words about this. But then the main thing I want to do next time is I want to kind of completely switch gears. So I will uh, give an introduction into the subject of uh, extended topological quantum field theories. I'm going to uh, uh, sort of declare that Kapustin and Wheaton essentially constructed, uh, well, at least partly constructed, uh, a family of such extended topological quantum field theories parameterized by P1. And note that here, now, everything, if we include C equal to infinity, then we get some, some kind of story here parameterized by points of P1. And then I'm going to explain. So here, we're talking about some kind of equivalence of two categories. So I'm going to exp explain what is the meaning of these two categories from the point of view of Kapustin with extended topological field theories, and what is the meaning of the equivalence of two categories, again, from the point of view of S duality between gauge theories. Okay, thank you. When you say topological quantum field theory, you don't really mean topological, right? I don't really mean topological, uh, all right. I mean, first of all, they, I mean, they're all also, they're only probably partly defined somehow, and uh, they're kind of infinitesimally topological. But I mean, of course, if you look at their papers, they, they just say topological. But somehow, uh, but uh, well, I don't really believe that that, that there is a well-defined family. I mean, I don't believe that there is a, that there is a family of theories which assigns a number to a four manifold. I mean, I 
strongly doubt that. So I mean, you know, it's extremely hard to believe, and, and I think it, I think nobody believes in that actually. Uh, so, but I mean, it's kind of the property of this theories that they constructed out of gauge theories very often is that the more you go down in dimension, the more complicated categorical structures you get, but the more well defined they are. And uh, so that's it. But how, how, but how do how, how do you check? I mean, I mean, I don't even know how. To see, well, for example, here they don't because when c is non-rational, this is zero. No, that, that that's right. But uh, no, but uh, oh, but okay, let's take this yeah, example. But uh, but, uh, but I don't even know what how 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 to answer this. I mean, okay, so let's look at this example. Does it vary or not? So you can just consider the category of models of the Kasmodi algebra and give a level. So you can see the level pi and level e. Are this, are this category is equivalent or not? I have absolutely no idea. And uh, I'm sure that even if they are for some reason, uh, uh, then there's absolutely no way to construct natural equivalence between them. So or even level pi and level square root 2. Let's go, are, they, are they equivalent or not? I have absolutely no idea, but I think it's the question is completely unnatural. You mean proving what? Proving this long class? Well, it's not, well, you have to construct it, first of all. I mean, before you prove something, I mean, it's a, it's a statement that there's the existing congruence of two categories. You have to somehow, so as Pyle said, that, I mean, the way it should be constructed is by means of some kernel. And the kernel should be a category which has both structures. So it's kind of, People call it universal Langlands category. Well, for every level, there should be some kind of universal Langlands category. So, so if if we ignore this zero infinity case, there should be a category which has uh, an action of g of level c and an action of g check of level minus one over c. And uh, so you have to construct it somewhere. So it's just one category. Uh, and uh, uh, so so once you have constructed it, you can talk about whether you can prove something. But before you have a construction, I mean, the word proof means nothing essentially. Uh, it's a good qu I mean, there is sort of, uh, I would say there is a construction module. I mean, there is enough of construction so that, so that they can really, so, it's, so it really becomes uh, a question of proving something rather than the way of constructing something. So there's a, there's a kind of conjectural construction, so the construction works if certain things are true. But, uh, but so, so somehow, so in other words, you can construct a category which has some uh, slightly more general structures, which, which contain these structures as a kind of, uh, as a special case, which such that it, it becomes the property that it has these structures and, and, not, and not an additional structure. So, but, well, I mean, frankly, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm completely up to date on this because somehow the situation sort of in the last I would say five years the situation more or less changes every day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, I, mean I, I, would, I would say that the proof that they're equivalent, no, probably not. But somehow, but for me, it's kind of important to sort of understand what is going on. That somehow, I mean, I mean for instance, I remember that, uh, I don't remember, Roman, do you remember that this was about, I think, 10 years, maybe more than 10 years? No, this was like 15 years ago, even more than that. Somehow, there was some discussion in Kajdan's office in Harvard, at Harvard about this uh, equivalences and uh, about your, your basically your favorite equivalence. And, uh, uh, and Dennis was asking you what is the Langlands meaning of Steinberg. And uh, so it kind of, you can kind of, rec I mean, I didn't have time to explain it properly, but you can actually 
recover it using this formula. So somehow we can actually formulate some statements which are very natural from Langle's point of view, and then we can actually, uh, but the same will not be that one category is equivalent to another, but the same will be that one category is Langle's dual to the other. And then you look at the endomorphism categories, and then you just <coughs> see what you get and get some statement which kind of looks actually much less natural from a certain point of view, but somehow, but it kind of fools. So, but I'm not sure that, uh, no, no, I, I, I would doubt that we get some kind of considerably different proof. Or, I don't know. Any more questions? Is there a Betty version? <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I don't know a better version of this local language. I mean, I mean may maybe it should exist, but somehow, but, but I mean, it's actually relevant, I mean, when we discuss tomorrow's topological field theorist, then if you really want them to be kind of honest topological field theorist, then you indeed you need a better version. I mean, you need some two category. Is there a better version for, I, I don't know, lo I mean, there's a, there's a better version for the global language, but I don't know a better version for local language. I don't know for, did we discuss it? We should discuss it, okay. Go on. <laughs> no, okay. Short answer that I don't know, but probably somehow in like ideal world, this should be. Okay, more questions? <laughs>